Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we are going to be looking at a great rumor today, the biggest rumor in the land. We've been doing free agent videos all through free agency and through the season trade videos and fairly accurately predicting where they will end up. We just did Phil Kessel recently. Man, that always gets a reaction when you start doing Phil Kessel stuff. A lot of people hate him. A lot of people love him. I love doing it. But today, we're going to be looking at Matthew Kachuk. And that's the biggest rumor in the land. Matthew Kachuk and where he may go. We have an article that shows, shows that says that uh, he has told Calgary he won't be signing long term there, which is basically like saying, get me out of here. I want to move on. I also have an art, another article that shows that uh, this has been kind of in the works for a long time. And before we do our final team, where I think he will likely go, I'll show you that article. I've been saying that Matthew Kachuk is going to be leaving Calgary for about a year now on my channel, which I do a live stream. So sub yourself up. You can catch me on those live streams and hear these fine pearls whenever I come on. Like tonight, I'll be going on with uh, Peyton on the radio, and we'll be talking about this and many other things. So we're going to look at Matthew Kachuk, look at his numbers and all of those sort of things like that. We're going to look at some teams that one of the articles says that he has put on his list. I don't know how they got that. find some of them kind of odd, but we're going to look at that. And one of the teams that I picked are not – on the list, but it doesn't say on the list that it is all the teams on the list. Just these are some of the teams that for some reason got leaked to some very good insiders that he would like to go to. Now, just because Matthew Kachuk has said he will sign long term to these teams doesn't mean that he actually will or wants to. If you're in a con, if if you are in a contract time in your life as a hockey player, an agent is probably going to tell you to not be limited to just one team, or at least not let anybody know that you are, because if you are, you lose leverage on how much you're going to make in a contract. So he's going to put out teams out there saying, oh, you know, "These are teams that I'll go to." Calgary is going to go to those teams and try to make a trade with them. And then Kachuk is going to talk to his agent and all that, blah, 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 blah. And every single one that he talks to, he's going to say, what are we talking about for a contract? Are you going to sign me long term? Give me some numbers. And they're probably going to figure out that he doesn't want to go there. But the team that he does want to go to, they're going to make them pay as high as they possibly can. Because if you can't get the guy, you might as well weaken the team he's going to go to. Right? Right. So that's the fun of NHL <coughs> contracts and stuff like that. I'm learning a lot with these trade videos, like how does value work? I, I was, I under, I overvalued the Brinkat. And the reason why was I didn't put two and two together that there's a pretty good chance to Brinkat gave him, gave Chicago a short list of teams that he would like to go to. In which case, that decreased the leverage of what they could get in return. You live, you learn. That's likely what's going to happen here. So let's take a look at the articles. What are we getting in Matthew Kachuk? And where might he go? All part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network, the NHL Pearl of Wisdom Show. Sub up and join me live. Okay. Here we have... Pro Hockey Rumors, one of the best publications out there. And they're quoting Jeremy Rutherford and Haley Sylvain of The Athletic, uh, who reports that, indicates that a trade is likely to happen soon, that apparently for a while, uh, what has been apparent for a while is now official. Matthew Kachuk has told the Calgary Flames that he will not sign a long-term contract. The interesting part I find for, find with this is, according to the Athletic, that list he 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 offered gave a list of teams that he would agree to a long term extension with, 
That list includes the St. Louis Blues, Vegas Golden Knights, Florida Panthers, Nashville Predators, Dallas Stars. With the New Jersey Devils and the New York Rangers expressing interest in the past. Doesn't mean they're on the list. Apparently, who's on the list are right here. Vegas Golden Knights, Florida Panthers, Nashville, the Predators, and Dallas Stars. So we'll look at those. And New Jersey Devils and Rangers have shown interest in the past. What team would not show interest in Matthew Kachuk? Why do I say that? I mean, it's, somebody needs to be fired if your team's not. It doesn't have interest in Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk is six foot two, two hundred and two pounder from Scottsville, Arizona. His father is also Mr. Kachuk himself who played for the Arizona Coyote. He was obviously born in Arizona while his father played for them. Uh, he's only 24 years old. He's a big, huge boy. And power forward as much as a power forward can get. He's what you like to call a unicorn in this league. To get a power forward that can score 42 goals and 62 assists, 104 points in 82 games and be one of the better be, better defensive wingers in the game. Plays with an edge like you wouldn't want to believe his competitive fire is insane. Confidence level. There is not a bad thing you can say about this dude. Period. He's insane. I would give up a crap load if my team was in there as a possibility for him. Which they were, by the way. My Edmonton Oilers were going to take Matthew Kachuk until Pulia Harvey fell to them. Anyways, no use continuing without complaining. Anyways, he got 100 points last year. Big, huge guy. Analytics people will lose their minds. There's not a person that shouldn't want Mr. Matthew Kachuk. And what a terrible time for the Calgary Flames. They already lost Goudreau. Uh, I believe Goudreau knew all along he wanted to go to Columbus too. I'll get into that in another video sometime, but this is sort of the same thing here. I think there's a place that Matthew Kinchuk really wants to go, and we're going to get to that in this video. But we'll start off with the people that were on the list, and we'll look at Calgary and what they might want with it for return for return. Now, if Matthew could, now that Matthew Kachuk is known to be wanting to go, there is really no use for them to hold on to him, although they can. Their only leverage is, is they don't really have to trade him. He's a restricted free agent. Uh, he's been given a qualifying offer. And uh, he can, if they don't trade him, he can accept the qualifying offer, or not let it, uh, not sign it, and hope that somebody goes out there and gives him an offer sheet in which case the return wouldn't be too bad. But really, Calgary doesn't have much leverage here, and it's probably a good idea to get this out of the way right away. What would they want in return? Probably another left winger to fill that spot. They could use a second-line center. They could use defense, too. They really just need players back as much as possible, assuming they're not going to rebuild. And I'll tell you, Calgary loathes the idea of rebuilding. Their fan base in Canada might be the one of the most finicky fan bases there, are, they, there is. If they don't play well, people don't show up. If people don't show up, sponsors don't want to sponsor, and you lose money. So I have a feeling they'll be looking for players to play now and just trying to be the best team that they can be. He's a beast. Analytically, he's amazing. Offen his expected offense, expected defense. Anybody who's not even an analytics person will love them. People that love big guys that can play physical and all of that grinding, dirty, whatever you want to say, guys, he is everything you want in a player. To me, he's a hockey player's hockey player. I love him. I love him. I love him. First team on the list is the Dallas Stars. This is the least likely. And mostly because they have no cap space. Um, which doesn't totally mean much in a way because Calgary does want players back. They have 11 million in cap space. They would have to sign him to a big contract. How much? 
I think they'd have to over. I, I think Dallas or anybody that besides the team that I think he really wants to go to is going to have to really overpay for him to, to, him to stay. Because I really think the number one team is going to be where he's going to want to go. So at that eleven million and a half would probably be totally taken up in signing Matthew Kachuk. Now, if I'm Dallas, would I do that? Frick yeah, I would do that. Are you kidding me? I would be all over it. What do you want? Besides maybe Jason Robertson, uh, would I give up Rope Hints? Probably. I would, you know, I know you don't have another center or whatever. I'm talking, I just, I love, 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 love this guy. The, the thing is, is you probably don't have to give up Rope Hintz because he's given a small amount of teams that he'd be willing to sign with. They're going to fight it out, but they don't have tons and tons of leverage. But if I had to, I would even consider Rope Hintz. Rope Hintz, uh, Essa Lindell and a first round pick. I would freaking do that. I love him so much. And I, I, I love Rope Hints too. Pavelski can play up the middle, uh, which is workout lineups later, to tell you the honest truth. You get a Matthew Kachuk, you get a Matthew Kachuk. Work your, work your lineup around him. The guy's a freaking unicorn. You don't find these guys ever on a market ever. If you happen to draft one, you hold on to them for as long as you give them whatever money you want. He's insane. Yes, I would give up Ropo Hints. Where are you going to get your other set, your center? I don't know. Find out later. Like this is the kind of guy where you just give what you need to give, take them, and then work out the details later. So tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Do you think as highly about him as I do? Because uh, maybe you wouldn't. The only one I may not give up, I probably wouldn't give up Robertson. I don't know. Maybe I would straight up. I would do Robertson straight up. I would actually, now that I think about it. I think Kachuk is better than Robertson straight up. I, I don't know if I would add any more to it, but I would do it. And I think Calgary would probably do that. Except the problem is you still got to, you don't have the cap room. You need more cap room. You're going to have to do Ropo hints. Basically, they're going to have to give up Ben or Sagan in the deal. And I just don't think Calgary's going to want either one of those players. And I think other teams out there would probably give a better offer than that. So I doubt Dallas is going to do something. Tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Do you think that there's a way here? There's a package you could put together that's going to make sense to get Matthew Kachuk? Um I personally don't think so. Vegas is on the list. He'd be willing to go to Vegas. And I know everybody's like, we just gave up Pacioretty to uh, to stay cap compliant. I know. But you're giving up. I'm giving up Jonathan Marcheseau because you're going to have to sign him to about $11 million a year, I think. So Marcheseau... Who else do you want? Uh, Shea Theodore and Marcheseau. Shea Theodore and Marcheseau should give you close to amount. You can work out the rest of the cap space some other way. I love Shea Theodore. I would hate to get rid of him. I would hate to trade him in anything. But for Matthew Kachuk, I would do it. I know I would. For sure. I would give Alex Peter Angelo, actually, before I give Shea Theodore. Anyways. But I'm pretty sure Alex Pietrangelo probably has a no trade, a no movement clause. Yeah, if he would agree to it, I would do it. I don't think he would, but I would do that, and you'd be able to do it. He's on the list. Would you be do that, Vegas fans? Would you give up Marcheseau and Shea Tador? I would do it in a heartbeat. I love him that much. I, I and I and if I'm Calgary. They got to be happy to get a return like that, to tell you the honest truth. Because their leverage is limited. And I think in the end, their leverage might even be less than that. And we'll keep on watching the video and I'll explain why. Nashville Predators, next. Uh, limited in cap space. It's on the list. 
would they would they do it? I mean, just I'm not even going to say would they do it. You'd be stupid not to do it. I'd want Tanner you know, if I'm Calgary, for sure know that about it. There's going to be other teams involved here if he really, really is going to go to any of these other teams, like he says. There's going to be other teams on there. And so I would take Janot, possibly Mike McGranlin, and maybe or maybe Mat- Matthias Ekholm, first round picks, something like that. First, I would love Janot though. Janot, Janot, Janot. First round pick next year, Matthias Ekholm. Does he have a no trade clause? He doesn't. He does not have a no trade clause. So yeah, at home they need defense and a first round draft pick next year. Possibly prospects as well on top of it. I would give all this up, by the way, for Matthew Kachuk. Absolutely no doubt about it. Put Matthew Kachuk with Johnson and and uh, Tomasino. Uh, put Duchesne in the middle. And then work in whoever you can on the right side. Like, I seriously don't care. You have Matthew freaking Kachuk. He is a unicorn, a beast, a beast of a player. The fact that you don't really have the strongest right side doesn't even matter if you got a guy like him. And you can work at a guy in the deadline or whatever. Just get Kachuk. Whatever you got to do, you get Matthew Kachuk. I believe. What do you think? Do you think I'm crazy here? So Granlin, Genot, and Matthias Ekholm. And yes, I would do that. I would do it. And I think Calgary might have to settle for something like that. It's a lot off your team, and you're going to have to work out your depth. But to get a Matthew Kachuk, man, I just I don't even care. I'm doing it. Tell me what you think, Nashville fans. Would you do that? I find it interesting that People love their players so much that they just even are blind sometimes to the idea of what they're getting in return. They just love their players and they don't want to lose them. But you would love Matthew Kachuk. Matthew Kachuk brings people to the seats. He brings everything you ever want in one player is packaged in this guy. He is a hockey player's hockey player. He's what cups are made out of. I take him for sure. Florida Panthers are on the list. Going to be tough to do this. By the way, you're going to have to sign him probably to 11 and 11 and a half million Nashville fans and Florida fans. And I'll explain why, why as you watch to the end of the video here. Okay. They're going to have to sign Huberto. Apparently, they're on the list of where he wants to go. Is Florida going to be interested? Of course, they're going to be interested. There's no team in the bloody, no chance any team is not interested in Matthew Kachuk. Verhege, Sam Bennett. Maybe. Now I think, no, Verhege and Ranheim. Let's do Verhege, Ranheim, a first round draft pick next year, Denisenko. Whatever. Take it. Just go. Just take it. I don't care. I got Matthew freaking Kachuk, man. And he gets to play with Sam Bennett, who he played with in Calgary. Uh, that would be a fun line, no doubt about that. Calgary would get some pretty decent return there. They would get a left winger or a right winger, or they would at least get somebody to fill in the spot that Goudreau left. And they get a righty who is really underrated in Sam Reinhardt, who also can play is killer at center, and they could use a second-line center. Um, and they get a little bit of cap space to keep on adding to their lineup, plus the prospects and picks or whatever the case may be. And if I'm Florida, I do this all day long. I know you got to sign Huberto, and he's going to be – I think he's going to cost you 11 and a half. And stick around, sub yourself up my, to my channel, all of you in the land, Comment in the comment section if you think that that's going to be something that you would do. And listen to the end of the video as I tell you why it's going to cost you that much. The next second, the second one, who's not on the list of teams that he said he would go to. 
the Ottawa Senators. And it didn't say on the it didn't say in the beginning where I told where I showed you the article that that the teams that were on there were all the teams. It said it was some of the teams. I find it hard to believe this wouldn't be one of the teams. I mean, Brady Kachuk, his brother, came all the way from Ottawa to Calgary to watch him in the playoffs. These guys love each other. Brady is signed up already for a long term in Ottawa. He he's chosen to be in Ottawa. You're telling me that this wouldn't be a team he would go to to play with his bro? I find it hard to believe. I still don't think it's a number one team, but I do think it's a number two team. The question is, what would Ottawa give up? I think they'd have to give up equal money back. And would they be interested? Well, of course they're interested. I've, any team that would not be interested in Matthew Kachuk has got rocks in their head. Uh, <laughs> he's an absolute beast. He could play the right side with his brother. In between, imagine that, Matthew Norris and, and Brady. And then you got to brink at Stutzla and Giroux because Batherson's part of the deal. You send Batherson back, Shane Pinto back, and a first round draft pick next year. Hopefully you can get away with that. Maybe throw Eric Branstrom in there. By the way, I do this all day. I love I love Drake Batherson, don't get me wrong. But he's not Matthew Kachuk. Plus you get the Machuk Chuck, you get the Kachuk brothers together. The, the the just the jersey sales and filling the building, everything that they would bring. Like you, there is a cup here almost for sure with those two guys on your team, I think. It's almost a guarantee you win a, Kachuk, win a cup with both Kachuks on your team. These guys are what winning and winning cups are all about. What winning in the playoffs are all about. These are hockey players, hockey players. They hate the opposition. They do it well. They do exactly what any coach would ever want from any player on a team. And if it's me, I would give up. For sure, I would give up Batherson, Eric Brandstrom. If it's not Brandstrom, I mean, I would even give up Lassie Thompson, Pinto, first round pick. Easily, I would do it. Tell me what you think. Ottawa fans, would you give up a package like that? I don't know if you would have to do that, but I would do that. But I think you're going to have to pay him huge. You're going to have to pay him more than Brady. Because ultimately, in his heart of hearts, and I'm going to, I said I would show another article before I did my last and final and where I think he's going to be. This was a year ago about Shane O'Brien from Sirius Radio. Shane O'Brien on Sirius Radio is not a guy who spreads rumors at all. He doesn't, you know, occasionally we'll talk on some things, but he's not what you would call a guy who's supposed to be an insider. All right. But he knows a lot of players out in the league. And every time Shane O'Brien has said something on Sirius Radio, it's almost always been accurate. Shane O'Brien, who got into radio and podcasting, he was a player, by the way. After his pro hockey career ended in 2018, had a lot to say about the rugged flames forward. I heard Kachuk once out of Calgary, said O'Brien. I think there could be a trade in the works. This was almost a year ago, by the way. Let's see if we can find that here. June 22nd, 2021. Over a year ago. And I've been talking about this for a long time. I've been saying that he's going to St. Louis. O'Brien went on to say that Chuck wants to play in St. Louis, his hometown team. He added that Vladimir Tarasenko could be part of the deal, and I believe that's exactly what's going to happen. And you're going to say, well, why then would he say that he'd go to all these other teams? Because he still wants to get paid. Yeah, all these other teams are going to vie for him, and they're going to say what they would give up and all that kind of stuff like that. And then they're going to talk to his agent and say how much he was going to pay. And 
he's going to say what he wants from them is way higher than what he actually takes in St. Louis. Most of these teams are going to know that really he wants to go to St. Louis, but they're going to put it, make it very difficult for him to go there. They're going to make it financially difficult for him to make that decision. Ultimately, he goes to St. Louis. No doubt about it in my mind. And you're going to say, well, they don't have cap space. They don't need cap space. Because after a lot of meandering and after a lot of home, hum and hawing like Goudreau did before he went to Columbus, I think he always wanted to go to Columbus. And the reason why it took him so long was he wanted to get as much money out of them as possible. The reason why he wanted to go to Columbus is was it was home, but not so close to home. He's a very private individual. In Columbus, people don't really know you there. It's not a big hockey market. He gets to walk around freely without being known and still be a millionaire and be six hours away of a drive or an hour flight away from his hometown. Perfect for him. This is perfect for Kachuk. And it actually is not bad for Calgary too because... Vladimir Tarasenko has been asking for a trade for a very long time. He's never said he doesn't want to be traded. It's been over a year now. Something happened with the medical team there and he lost trust or something like that. He's been a good soldier and he's stuck with them. But, you know, you're going to say, well, they don't have cap room. Well, they do now because they're going to trade Vladimir Tarasenko in this deal and possibly more. Which Calgary needs players back. They're not going to rebuild. I'll tell you, Calgary will never rebuild. I even heard that Tory Krug could be part of that deal because they have player, they have defensemen coming up like Perunovic, who is a left defense, left defenseman that could take that role. If they were able to get Tarasenko and Tory Krug in this deal. I think Calgary would be satisfied with that. It's a player that, you know, they don't even have to keep both of them. They can talk to Tarasenko and say, hey, would you sign long term here? Let's go back to Calgary. By the way, you'd have, they get Matthew Kachuk. Matthew freaking Kachuk. You can put Big Navich on the right side, Thomas Kachuk, Kyra Riley saw it. My God. My God. I would do this in an absolute heartbeat. I don't even know if they'd have to give up more, much more than this because I think by the end of it, Calgary's going to be pigeonholed to be happy to get back what they can get back. So they might have been able to get more from other teams, but by the end of it, he's basically going to change his mind as soon as he gets the dollar he wants from St. Louis, and he's going to tell Calgary, I only want to go to St. Louis. The deal will be made, and it's going to look something like this. So, Calgary. What would Calgary get in this? I mean, Calgary doesn't even have to. St. Louis, by the end of it, probably wouldn't even have to do this. But they do have to make room. If they were to get Tarasenko, and Tarasenko is willing to stay there and sign long term, you could put him with uh, Lindholm, put Toffoli on the left side, and then Mangiapane back from Coleman you know, go down the list here. And if you got Krug on the left side, you could possibly trade Oliver Shillington. Use that if he's willing to stay there. He's got a pretty decent contract. He's already signed up. Did he have a no trade clause? Tory Krug, left defense. He's from Michigan. He has a no trade clause, so he would have to agree to go there. But something like that could be what could be worked out. If it's not Tory Krug, maybe Marco Scandella or whatever, they don't have much leverage. Just take whatever they can get. If Tarasenko doesn't want to sign there long term, they could use him to trade somewhere else in a three way trade, get back as many assets as they can. Now, if I'm Calgary, I'm wanting to rebuild here, but I know they're not going to. That's for another show. St. Louis fans, would you do that deal? Come on, you know you would. You know you would. Tell, don't tell me you're not going to do that deal. Is anybody out there that would not do that deal? 
I will be blown away. I'm doing it in a heartbeat. I think he's going to St. Louis. He's just playing around to get as big a money as he possibly can. The Kachucks are known to do that sort of thing. For some reason, I forgot their father's name, Keith Kachuk. They're known to do that sort of thing. I think he's always wanted to do that. Shane O'Brien brought it up a long time ago. And I think at the end of the day, that's where he goes. That's my full 42. Comment in the comment section. Everybody tell me what you think. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.